Hello Java developers! My name is Matt Rabel and today I'd like to show you how to build a secure REST API and native image using Helidon. Let's giddy up! I created a demo script for this. You can find it in Octodev native Java examples and the demo Helidon. Adoc file. And like I said, we're going to create a Java REST API, secure it with OAuth 2, and then we'll pass a JWT to it to authenticate our user. And then I'll do some comparisons with other frameworks that allow you to build Java REST APIs like Micronaut, Quarkus, and Spring Boot. And so for the demo script, for the repo, for a related blog post, check out the description on this video. I put links all over in there and you'll be able to find all this information. The first thing you'll need is SDK Man. I already have it installed. And if you need to get it, you can get it from sdkman.io and then HTTPIE. And you can get that from HTTPIE.org, I believe. And then CLI.Octa.com is where you get the Octa CLI. I already have that installed as well. At the end of some of the steps, you'll find IntelliJ Live templates that I use. So they're just little brackets, and I store those in Idea Live templates on GitHub. So if you want to import them and use them, you certainly could. But there's just a couple, and you could copy and paste the code just as easily. So with SDK Man, you can install Java 17. I already have it installed. And so if I did Java version, you would see it there. If you want to see all the Java Graal VM versions available, you can SDK list Java and then grep for girl there. And then the first thing we want to do is generate an OAuth2 access token. So with the Okta CLI, that makes it pretty easy. If you don't have an Okta account, you can do Okta register or Okta login if you do. And then I'll do Okta apps create spa. And this, we're gonna use OIDC debugger for this. That's a website that allows you to easily create an access token. And the post logout redirect URI should match there. And then you'll see we got that client ID and issuer. So if we were to go to the site, it does remember my information from last time. So you might have to add, you know, your issuer here and then tack on V1 authorize and then copy in your client ID. And, you know, everything else is okay. The defaults with uh, code, you might need to check PKCE because I don't believe that's a default. And then make sure and tack on V1 token there and then click send request. And it comes back and does the pixie dance and gets me that access token. So now I can set that right here. And back to our instructions. And we'll build a Java REST API with Helidon. So using their Maven archetype. We'll cd into downloads here and run it. And this is using the Helidon quick start micro profile there. And then we can open that up in IntelliJ. There's also a Helidon CLI you can use and run Helidon init for that. The first thing you'll need to do is add micro profile JWT support in the pom.xml. So just right at the top there should be fine. And then add a hello resource. Looks like I got a typo there in the source main Java here. And we'll put it in the controller package. And then we got a shortcut, IntelliJ Live template. And this, you know, is just at the available at the path of slash hello, and it does a get request. I don't believe we actually need that one in there. That one should work fine. And then, uh, you know, returns the user's information from the principal. So then we can also add a hello application to register that class. And this is that H app for my shortcut. No. All right, we'll just copy and paste it then. and re-import to get that JWT import. And then you can see we just register the class there, application scoped, it's just part of micro profile. And then we'll add our Okta endpoints into source main resources, meta inf micro profile config dot properties. So this is our Okta domain, which we have back here. Replace that. There is no command to just start up a Helidon app. If you use Helidon CLI, there is, but I've just been doing MVM package and java-jar with the uh, generated you know, jar there. And what do we have here? We have a test failure. Uh-oh, we better go. Oh, we need to delete these two because, well, we don't need them. 
And then I think it generates a test as well. So that main test looks like it goes to greet Joe. And yeah, we'll just delete it. Who needs tests anyway, right? And then we'll go ahead and run it again. And then it doesn't like that we forgot to put jar on there, which makes perfect sense. I don't blame it. So it starts up and now we can go ahead and hit that endpoint with our token. Make sure and reset it there. Invalid URL. Um, let's see, maybe I just did the command wrong. Yep, looks like it. I did it in the wrong order. So I got some cleanup to do on my instructions. If you go to the demo script after this, I make, I'll make sure it's all up to date. But you can see, you know, it's logging me in. It's got my information there and it's all working. So let's go ahead and build a native Heladon app. So I want to make sure it's not running in the background. And then make sure you're in the project. You can see that took just over a minute to run there, a minute 20 seconds according to my calculations. And now we can go ahead and start it up with uh, target Heladon. You'll see it's kind of buried in here, but it uh, gives the uh, time it started there 54 milliseconds. So let's try it again. 31 milliseconds and 31. So that seems to be pretty consistent there. That's all working nicely. If we did a startup time comparison here with uh, the other frameworks, what I did was I cloned them all or I created apps just like I showed you how to do here and then I started them all three times and then I started them five times and took the average of that. So you can see, you know, milliseconds to start here for Heladon is 42. Um, this is on an M1 so it's much faster here with 30 milliseconds. This was on Intel that I initially, originally recorded these numbers. So with uh, Micronaut it's 27 milliseconds. With Quarkus, <sighs> wicked fast, 19 milliseconds. And then Spring Boot, a little bit slower than Heladon there. And then the memory usage, this is a command I use to figure out memory usage with Heladon. Uh, it starts up before any requests, 42 megs used, which is awesome for a job application, right? And after five requests, it has 62. And then you can see the comparison with the others there. And then what about the MacBook Pro M1, which I'm using to record this? You know, the milliseconds to start is 23, so faster than when I'm recording this with Camtasia. And you know, the megabytes go up a bit after the request. Not sure why that is, but my basic synopsis is it builds twice as fast, which is very nice for a developer experience. It starts twice as fast, which is again, very nice, but it does use a bit more memory. And so what we did with the Octa CLI is we made it easy to create a Heladon app that integrates with Octa. So if I were to you know, exit out of here and cancel this one and go up a level and create a new directory, clear this so you can see it easier. Octa start Heladon. It'll actually go out to a GitHub repo that we maintain and create a new OIDC application for you and tell you, you know, everything's been written to this file. So, you know, use gitignore to check that in or to ignore that file with if it has client secrets in it, which it doesn't right now, or use environment variables. And you can find this example's code in that native Java examples repo and the Heladon directory. And of course, the blog post build REST APIs and native Java apps with Heladon. So I hope you've enjoyed this screencast. If you want to find me, I'm on Twitter at mrabel. You can find my team at Octodev and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get notifications when we publish more cool content like this. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.